would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a fish? Hey, I'm Hank, and this is Army of Me, the program where I do a little recap of the latest episode of the FX series Legion. Spoilers ahead for Season 2, Episode 2. Entitled Chapter 10, this episode was directed by Anna Lily Armipour and written by Noah Hawley and Nathaniel Halpern. If you've listened to a bunch of my podcasts, you'll know I'm very self-conscious about how badly I mispronounce people's names. So, here's the breakdown from Wikipedia. I'm just going to run through this one real quick, and then we'll get into my thoughts about everything that's going on. David agrees to work with the Shadow King and causes a distraction by taking many of the others to the desert, while the Shadow King takes Oliver's body to Division 3, where he believes the last surviving monk of the Maigo Order may be hiding. The Maigo monks had played a role in hiding the Shadow King's body. The Shadow King doesn't find the monk, but he does kill several soldiers and traps Carrie Loudermilk within the body of the other Carrie, the girl that's usually within his body. Members of Division 3 begin to suspect that David is working against them. He regrets helping the Shadow King now that it caused loss of life, and he convinces the Loudermilks to further enhance his own abilities so he can try to contact Sid in the future. There, she explains that David will kill the Shadow King within a week, but then a plague will kill all the humans on the planet, and the Shadow King could have helped them stop it. Returning to the present, David confronts the Shadow King, who agrees to no longer kill people in exchange for David's continued cooperation. David tells Sid what he's doing, and she agrees that they should do as her future self says. All right, that's what Wikipedia says anyways. At Wikipedia, they always use people's last names instead of their first names, whereas I prefer to say their first names, so that's why you always hear me sort of stuttering and hesitating as I'm figuring this shit out. There is so much psychedelic imagery in this episode. Psychedelic imagery in this episode, am I right? So yeah, David strikes a deal with his devil. He'll distract his team to let the Shadow King poke around the Division Three headquarters for the King's body. Does Oliver really need to die? We see Oliver, or the Shadow King, and he's turning people into charred piles of ash and pigs and fish. Are these Oliver's powers? The Shadow King's powers? Or are these other powers stolen from other people the King has devoured over the years? While looking at the orb that took away David, Carrie notes, It's advanced, but not shy R. That's a wonderful throwaway line. The shy R are an advanced alien race in the X-Men comics, so that Carrie would have any awareness of them is a lovely bit that doesn't really need to be followed up on. It's just a real good Easter egg. It is nice to see that the Shadow King won't kill kids. Maybe there's still some human in there after all. I love spending time with the Carries. I'm so scared for them. They're two of the best mutant characters ever created for the X-Men mythology. Their interactions are brilliantly idiosyncratic. There's some real body horror stuff when Carrie gets trapped inside Carrie and then winds up with an arm reaching out from the center of her chest. Real Cronenberg stuff. Stereo. Scanner. Crimes of the video drone. The dead zone. Rabbits. The fly. Dead ringers. Naked lunch. M. Butterfly. Crack. David is trying to make a deal with the Shadow King, but the Shadow King is not somebody you can make deals with. He's not somebody you can control. He's a monster. He's hunger. He's a destroyer. He reminds me a lot of Cassandra Nova. That's a villain from the X-Men comics. Sort of a tulpa of a powerful mind. A tulpa is a concept in mysticism and the paranormal of a being or object which is created through spiritual or mental powers. The Shadow King reminds me the most of a Mamudrai, a concept from the X-Men comics created by Grant Morrison. The Mamudrai 
are non-corporeal parasites composed solely of emotional energy born from the astral plane of existence. In essence, they are the dark reflections of any sapient species that inhabited a mirror universe of their own and only occasionally cross the veil from their portion of the astral plane known as the underworld. So David lies to the Carries and manipulates them into letting them use his powers to probe the future, where he meets future Sid, who he almost seems to be having, like, a weird affair with. David's trip into the future reminds me a lot of the Stargate in 2001 Space Odyssey. And I don't trust the future. In each episode, we seem to get these little stories within stories. This episode has the tale of the tick. There's a tale of a tick in Grant Morrison's Invisibles. I'm going to read it to you now. The story is told of a woman who finds herself in a glorious garden orchid of unsurpassed beauty and luxury. Each perfect day is spent indulging in pleasure. Godlike, she wants for nothing. And then, on one more glorious evening, she ventures to the crystal lake of sweet ambrosia, which nourishes her, and, as she dips to drink, her eyes are opened to the hideous truth behind the illusion of existence, and she realizes that she is a monstrous, parasitical insect. The heavenly garden is simply the skin of her unsuspecting host, the lake of heaven no more than the bloodstream upon which she battens and feeds. That's how it feels. That's how it feels now. Yeah, so that's a little story that Grant Morrison put into The Invisibles, and it kind of reminded me of the story they tell in this episode of uh, Legion. We get another little side story about how we're taught to understand our own perceptions of reality and how we can be manipulated that way. It almost seems like Oliver, or the Shadow King, is testing people. Like he's looking for something in their minds or he wants to make something. We get another great scene with Clark, who might be the smartest person in the series. And then we get to the big meat of the episode. David meets the Shadow King. The tapeworm. The, tape the real tape Shadow the King. The no masks on, I think. The tapeworm. I love the Shadow King. He's a fascinating person. I love his sensuality, his need for dominance, and how he manipulates the psychic battles. The King is encouraging David to control reality, to manipulate the universe into being what David wants it to be. There's an idea here that mutants are gods, that they can rule the world, be anything, be everything. This is interestingly in contrast to last episode where Clark was suggesting that perhaps myths were just based on mundane realities that got stretched into legends by hyperbole. Wrestling is an interesting way to depict a psychic battle. David might be stronger, but the king is able to get closer. Psychically interacting is a bit like making love, right? You're letting each other inside each other. It's very intimate. Even a battle can be mistaken for a dance. It looks a lot in one shot, like the Shadow King has his hand up David's ass, like David is his puppet. And I don't believe that's an accident. And then afterwards, we see Lenny interacting with the Shadow King. We see that Lenny is something distinct from the Shadow King. Lenny is inside the Shadow King, and Lenny wants out. This is an interesting perspective on what's real and what's not. Lenny would like a new body to go live somewhere else and be alive again. And the Shadow King asks her, and then what? Eventually she would die. And he asks her, and then what? And she grows silent. After death is nothing. But if she stays with the king, she'll never die, so long as he doesn't. 
Do you ever think about your own death? I think of it as there is an empty room and you're not in it. You won't be aware of your own death. You just won't be. You'll be gone. You can't imagine that kind of emptiness. Clear your mind of all thoughts, memories, everything. And then what? Then still nothing. That's you. When you're gone. It's such a big thought, it could swallow you up. And someday it will. I love the banana splits. It made me very happy to have Carrie use their theme song to help themselves. Again, such a wonderful way to show how the unique experiences of being a mutant would impact your life. Making mutant powers about song and dance is so powerful, and something the comics can't really pull off. It's fucking perfect. God, poor Melanie. She is one of the lives who have been crushed by all these mutant powers, mutant lives, mutant battles, mutant agendas. Getting Oliver back and losing him again really broke her. We all die eventually. The real tragedy is forgetting to live. And David finally starts talking honestly with Sid, and thank God for that. So chapter 10. I can't really guess at where this show is going or what might happen next. It's not that kind of story. It's like a dream. You don't try to guess where it's going, you just experience it, and then think about what it all means when it's over. So what does it all mean? People are unraveling. Everybody has identity issues, in the show, in real life. These are all actors playing people. These are all words written by writers who live little lives inside their heads. What's real? Are dreams real? Am I real? I'm just a voice on a recording. I'm not even a real person. This is just a sound. But it's an idea in your head. Is that real? Are things inside your head real? Are things outside your head real? Can you pick and choose? So, chapter 10. So, chapter 10. So, chapter 10. Legion. A very interesting, compelling program. Let's all take a deep breath and then see what happens next. What do you think? You can reach out to us on Twitter at Death by Media Man with any thoughts you have about all this weird stuff. Anyway, I've been Hank, and that's been this episode of Army of Me. A big thanks to you for being you. quite a few so you see it's all up to you you could be better than you are you could be This has been a Death by Media Man production. For more Death by Media Man content, check us out on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you dig what we did, feel free to leave us a like or a comment and share this link with your friends. And if you'd like to support us with some of your money, we got a Patreon as well. Thanks so much for listening, and remember... Uh, crap, I forgot what I was going to tell you to remember. Well, anyways, thanks for listening. You're awesome.